Hello everyone, welcome to the show. This is Bowen, helping you find another celestial weapon in Final Fantasy X. We're going after the God Hand today for our Albed party member, Riku. That's not all we're going to get here. In addition to retrieving the physical weapon from Mushroom Rock Road, we'll also need to obtain the Mercury Crest and the Mercury Sigil, both of which are found on Beacon L Island. We'll also be heading to Makalania so that we can power up the celestial weapon to its maximum strength. And I'll be showing you how to do all that right now. First things first, to collect the weapon, you'll need to progress to the end of the game so you have access to the airship. Go to the navigation screen and input the password GODHAND, all caps, in order to unlock a secret location named Mushroom Rock. Travel to this location and follow the path until it dead ends and you find the chest. You will need the celestial mirror to unlock this chest, which we have covered how to obtain in a separate guide. That video is linked down below if you need help. Present the mirror and you have obtained the God Hand. Super simple, but the base weapon is quite weak, so we'll need to fix that. The Mercury Crest is one of the two key items we need to get so we can upgrade the God Hand. It's located in the Sanubia Desert. I'll be starting from the safe here on the central desert map as a reference point, and we'll be traveling to the western map. We're going to be doing a lot of running around in this video, so I'd highly recommend picking up some no encounters equipment to avoid fiend battles. Once we get here, Head over to this sand pit and open the chest at the bottom to gain the Mercury Crest. We're staying on Beacon L to get the Mercury Sigil so that we can complete the Cactar Village minigame. Now, it's important to know that this minigame can't actually be started the first time you're on Beacon L, only after you have the airship. We'll head to the western map again from the central region. And when you get here, you'll see this Cactar Stone overlooking a sandstorm. If you interact with the stone, you'll be given the first of 10 riddles as to the locations of 10 cactars. The first riddle reads, Tomei's gone, gone to fetch water. A bit cryptic, but not exactly rocket surgery. Where on Beaconel is their water? The Oasis. So we travel there, and sure enough, here is Tomei. If you interact with him, you'll be able to read his Tinder profile, and then he'll challenge you to a game of red light, green light. If you're from a less American part of the world, you might know this game as statues, or grandma's footsteps, or stop and go. Basically, you have a time limit to reach the cactar, and you can only move if its back is turned to you. If it catches you moving, you'll have to start over, and you only get three attempts to catch him. Once you do, you'll have a battle with the cactar. The battle shouldn't be too difficult, cactars have about 800 health, but they have high armor, agility, and magic resistance. They also have a special attack called 10,000 Needles that will auto-kill whoever it hits. You can fight or flee, but no matter what, you'll retrieve a unique sphere from the Cactar. Once you have the sphere, you can take it back to the stone overlooking the Cactar village, and you'll receive the second riddle, which reads, Revivia's gone, walkabout. This one is less helpful than the last, but luckily you have this video to show you exactly where to go. We'll be going to the eastern desert map to find our second cactar. Now I'm going to be moving through the rest of these pretty quickly, so if you're having trouble following, I've linked an incredible map drawn by Arun Lu over at Level Skip that can definitely help. Again, we'll head back to the stone with the sphere we obtained to receive the third clue. Little Chava likes big numbers. For this one, we don't have to travel very far, as Chava is located right here on the western map. You just need to interact with this signpost to find them. The fourth riddle reads, Alec and Elosia play tag in the ruins of men. We'll head to the central map, and as the clue suggests, we'll actually be finding the fourth and fifth cactars on this one. Our fifth riddle is, Vachella seeks the shining blue, and this one will lead us to one of the save spheres, specifically the one on the eastern map. Interact with the save sphere and back out, at which point the cactar will appear. Now, if you fail to catch the Cactar after your three attempts, you'll still receive a Sphere, but instead of the unique named Sphere, you'll get a Sphere del Perdedor, literally a Loser Sphere, which you can place in the Cactar Stone instead. You don't actually need to win any of the individual Cactar challenges to retrieve the Mercury Sigil, you'll only need to find the Cactars after receiving the corresponding Riddle. The named Spheres affect the other prizes you win at the end of the minigame. Riddle number six reads, Oh, Robea Stuck Inside. We'll be traveling to the central map and heading to the far corner so that we can open this chest containing the Cactar. 
Now this one is actually special because there are three chests that are placed on the map. You don't need to actually open any of them, they just have useful items in them. But if you are going after them, open the two closest to you on your first attempt, open the furthest one on your second attempt, and then catch the cactar on the third attempt. For riddle number seven, we get this. A fiery inscription, the lord of the hole is gone, Isra thinks. To find our eighth cactar, this one is located on the western map, but we actually need to leave the map and re-enter it before he will spawn. He will be running around in a sand pit. Now this one is interesting because there seems to be a glitch where you can run down into this sand pit at the start and clip through the map until you reach the sand pit at the end, at which point you'll pop back in and be able to catch the cactar. Cactar number 9, Elio, is actually the only one not in the desert. Once you've placed Isra's sphere, you'll need to walk all the way back to the oasis and return to the airship. Very important that you use the Oasis save sphere to do this, because you'll trigger a unique cutscene showing the little bugger sneaking aboard. Once on the airship, you'll need to head out to the airship exterior, and standing there on the bow is Elio. As a tip, you should also definitely be saving regularly throughout this process. The last riddle in the minigame is Flail is always behind. A bit on the nose, since Flail will automatically appear behind you once you read the final clue. Now this challenge is different from the others because the audio cues and text pop-ups do not correlate with whether or not Flail will actually spot you. You have to go entirely on sight on this one based on if he's facing you. Finish his challenge and you'll receive your last sphere. Place it in the stone, and the sandstorm surrounding the Cactar Village will disappear, and you'll be able to head down into the valley where you can collect the Mercury Sigil. The contents of the other chest down here will depend on how many of the named Cactar Spheres you were able to win. We return to this location in Makalania, where we receive the Celestial Mirror. We'll go through the process of empowering the God Hand twice, once for both of the key items we collected. Once it has been upgraded with both the Crest and the Sigil, it'll now have the abilities Break Damage Limit, Triple Overdrive, Double AP, and Gillionaire, which doubles the amount of Gill you receive in each battle. The weapon also has the Hidden Property, where it will deal more damage the closer to max HP Riku is. And that's another Celestial Weapon in the bag! If you're looking to complete the set, we have guides for the other six weapons, as well as videos for other collectibles in Final Fantasy X. Head over to the channel page and subscribe while you're there. Thanks for watching.